All right, guys, let us have a very quick discourse on red blood cell structure. Remember, red blood cells are also known as the erythrocytes. Of course, they are called red blood cells because they are the ones that account for the redness of the blood. Of course, I'm sure you remember that the redness of blood is because of the hemoglobin that is present in the red blood cell. Okay, now, in this short video, we will look at the shape, the size, and the membrane of the red blood cells and how these three parameters contribute to the function of red blood cells. Note that red blood cells are discoid by concave in shape. They are just like a disc, like your CD, with diameter of about 7.2 micrometer plus or minus 0.3 micrometer, meaning the diameter ranges from 6.9 micrometer to 7.5 micrometer. And the thickness is about 2.2 micrometer. Note something from the diagram of red blood cell that the thickness at the periphery is more than the thickness at the center. So the 2.2 micrometer is actually the thickness at the periphery. The thickness at the center is just about 1.1 or 1.0 micrometer. Also, the volume of one red blood cell is about 90 femtoliter, or you can say 80 to 100 femtoliter. Note, red blood cells that are larger than these are known as macrocytes. And we have these in pernicious anemia, folate deficiency anemia, and even vitamin B12 deficiency anemia. And red blood cells that are smaller than these are known as microcytes. Microcytes. And we have these in certain anemias, especially iron deficiency anemia. Also, the red blood cell membrane is just like any other cell membrane. It is made up of three main components, PLC, protein, lipids, and carbohydrate. Protein being the most predominant, accounting for 50%, lipids accounting for 40%, and carbohydrate only accounting for 10%. Note that the red blood cell is blessed with a lot of special protein, example, example like band 3 protein spectrin and kerin all these proteins perform specific function but for the purpose of this discourse i will only mention spectrin and ankerin why am i mentioning them they are the one that give the they are the one that support the architecture of the red blood cell membrane and if they become defective the effect will be that the structure of the red blood cell will be distorted and it will result in a condition that is known as hereditary spherocytosis in which the normal discoid biconcave shape of red blood cell will be distorted instead the red blood cells become spherical and because of that they get destroyed easily whenever they pass through the spleen this is actually an autosoma dominant disorder likewise there are lipid of course the phospholipid is predominant in red blood cell membrane just like any other cell membrane but they also have another specialized lipids which are known as the glycolipids and it is worthy of note to note glycosphingolipids which is the editing, determinant of I the abo blood group system the their carbohydrates Thanks are usually so in combination watching. with others like in form of glycoprotein and glycolipids in summary, the discoid by concave red blood cells, which are very important in transporting oxygen, are able to do this because of the following. Number one, their size is small, so they are able to pass through tiny capillaries. Number two, they have flexible membrane, which allow them to change their shape whenever they are they needed to pass through these tiny capillaries. Number three, hemoglobin which account for about one third of the content of their cytoplasm is responsible for transportation of oxygen. Number four is the fact that they are very numerous, being the most abundant of all the blood cells. So all these features give them the advantage which they have. Thanks for watching.